And instead, we're going to show SQL prompt, which are just, just a bunch of like helpful tips and tools that um, will make you a more efficient SQL developer. Now, real quick, um, I know a lot about SQL development. So I've been writing SQL for almost two decades and have been an MVP on SQL for um, five years, going on six years now. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that you might not have known. I'm going to show you both SQL prompt tips and tricks, but I'm also going to show you um, some other just generic SQL tips also. So the first thing I really like about SQL prompt is if I have a development workstation like this, and I, or a development server that I'm on, and I also have a production server that I'm on, one thing that I can do is I can right click on development and I can change the tab color to green. And then I can click on production and I can change that tab color to red. And now when I'm in the development server, if I click new query, it goes green. And if I'm in the production server and I click new query, it's red. And so that tab color that I have at the top there is like my go stop if I'm doing updates and deletes and mod data modification, right? Now, you might notice that my status bar up here where it has things like, and I'll just zoom in. I don't know if you can see this when I zoom in. But, you know, this is the status bar that SSMS has everywhere. And most people put that on the bottom. And just to kind of show you that, um, if I click here and I click um, Editor tab and status bar, the default is the bottom. But I put mine on the top. And in large part, the reason why I put it on the top is because I like the coloring up there where I'm writing code to begin with. So just keep that in mind, that at that tab color is a feature of SQL prompt. And that, cab, that tab color preserves itself between sessions. If I close SS, SSMS down and I add SSMS back, I add new query to development, I get a green. I add new query to production, I get a red. So um, there's, a, there's an alternate feature in SSMS, um, and you might see that on the connection properties, where here you can click here and you can say use custom color, and you can choose red. This feature does not persist in between sessions. So um, just be aware of that, that that feature, it, it, because it doesn't persist, it's borderline useless. So I wouldn't use that feature. I would use um, the SQL prompt feature for tab coloring. OK. So here are some other features just basic of SSMS that you might not know. Like if I say um, select from sales.customer, right? And I don't know what I want, I can click on like AdventureWorks 2012. I can open up tables. I can find sales.customer. And I don't know what, what columns I want. I can drag a column and just drop it, right? Now, a lot of people know that you can drag object names out of Object Explorer and drop it. But what you might not know is you can drag the whole column list. You see how I, down here, I grabbed all the columns and I dragged all the columns over. And now all the columns move over for me, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, in SQL prompt, there's a feature that's very similar to Visual Studio. Visual Studio has something called Control KD, which is auto format. This is ugly SQL right now, and I'd want it to be better. SQL Prompt doesn't use Control KD. It uses Control KY, and I'm hitting that right now. And that auto formatted that SQL for me automatically. Now, I love this feature so much, because if I'm looking at someone else's stored procedure, and they formatted it incorrectly, it might take me an hour to format it correctly before I can even begin to troubleshoot what's going on with that store procedure. So just this control KY saves me so much time as a consultant trying to figure out you know, good code and who's writing good code. In addition to this, what happens if I wanted to add an alias because I know I'm going to join something? This is not a feature of SQL, of, uh, SQL prompt. This is a feature of most Microsoft products. So if I want to alias this, now I've got to go into these column headers and do like C dot here and then come back C dot here, right? That's nonsense. What you can do instead is you can do Alt Shift 
And this is block selection. And I selected all of those columns and just type C dot. And now I've aliased all of those columns at once. So that is um, Shift Alt and whatever you want, right? It, it could be um, Shift Alt over here, right? You just saw me. And I'm going to do that again because I think it's super cool. So I, I'm on line one. I do Shift Alt. I go all the way to the bottom and just type in my alias and I'm done. Um, okay, the next thing, the next thing that is interesting here is, um, let's see, what did I want to say? I did the C dot alias, I did that, um, hmm. Oh yeah, thanks guys. Is there a cheat sheet? There's not, I didn't make a cheat sheet, no, I've just, in fact, that one I just kind of did, <laughs> um, just kind of improved it. So um, maybe I can make a cheat sheet. Let me think about that. Okay. But you know, I can also tell you some common mistakes that I see developers make all the time, right? Like if I'm in the T-SQL 2012 database, and this isn't SQL prop. This is just me speaking generically. I see code like this all the time. So they'll do like select star from sales.customers, right? Fine, right? One thing that SQL prompt can do is you can expand the wildcard. So SQL prompt will let me tab, and it just does that automatically for me. So that's really good. Um, and it gets rid of the asterisk out there, and then I can just drop the columns that I'm not using, right? But what I see is like if, if you come in here, you'll see like region has some nulls in it, and you know what, that's fine. So if my boss comes to me and she says, hey, I want an address for, um, for maybe a mailing list or something, what I can do is I can say, oh, okay, well, I'm going to take company name and just start concatting, right? So I take this, and then I add contact name. And just for this um, kind of proof of concept, I don't want a lot of columns here. I'm just going to add region to it. So then I can cat the region to it, right? And then I just say, as address line one. And then I execute that. Let me get rid of that. And what you'll see is sometimes it works, but a lot of the time there's nulls in here. And we're like, oh, one of these columns has a null in it, and we don't really know which one. And there could be like 20 columns we're concatting, cat, concatting here. So what I see often is code that looks super ugly because we don't know which one, they just start is nulling everything. And they is null that one, and it still doesn't work. And they is null this one, and it still doesn't work. And they is null, finally they get to region, and they is null region. And then finally it works, and they're like, now you've got all this ugly code in here nobody really wants to see, right? So I'm going to back out of all this, control Z out of all of this, right? And instead of doing it this way, Instead of using is null, you should be using concat. So you don't use the plus anymore. It's just like the string format function in C sharp. You just hand in a bunch of parameters. And then if there are any nulls, it just returns an empty string for that one specific parameter. That's the concat function. And I run that, and now it works. The code's a lot prettier, and you're not like littering all of your code with is nulls now. Right, that which is super super terrible practice. Right. At the same note, right, if we look at like select star from sales dot customers, let's see if I can see data in here. I see this mistake all the time too, where um, I don't see it. Let, let's look at what's in T one. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to create a table. Create table T two call one bar char. 20, okay. And then I'm going to insert some records. Insert into T2. Um, and then did you guys know that SQL lets you do um, multi-row multi inserts like this? So I can say 1, A, B, C, D, fill that. So this, it actually, if you format it correctly, let's do Control K, Y, it looks better like this, right? So this is going to insert three rows into T2. Did you guys know you can write code like that? Super useful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select star from T1, or T2, excuse me. 
and look at it, there's one, two, ABC. And now I'm going to cast call one as int, right? So I see this code all the time, and it says, hey, conversion failed. But it doesn't tell me the row number that failed. It, it just tells me the value. It doesn't even tell me the column that failed, right? So rather than do cast, what you can do is a try cast. And now here, you execute that. And now it casts it successfully when it can. It doesn't cast it if it can't. It just returns null. So now, at least now, you know which one's failing your cast, right? And you can kind of look at the other columns in the result set and go hunt down where your cast is failing, right? OK. But there you saw, at least, even though that wasn't strictly SQL prompt, at least you saw, like, Control KY format that ugly SQL for me that I wrote um, without me, you know, editing a bunch of stuff. And if I like this, I can save this off as, like, messing with T2 table here. OK. Now that that's saved, I wanted to show you another feature with SQL prompt called tab history. And if I click on tab history, you can see the tabs that I have. So if I close a bunch of tabs here, maybe I close all of my tabs here, I can click on tab history and get any tab back, like this one. And now that, now that tab is back. Um, so tab history can be super useful if you shut things down a little prematurely and you want to get them back. You can get them back. I like to save things and name them because it makes it easier to hunt what I'm looking for and get it back for me. OK, how are we doing? You guys doing well? We've been at this for about an hour. It's been a fast hour. Hopefully you've learned something already.